<laughs> okay, congrats on the win. Um, tough first set. Um, how did it feel to get that over the line against Caroline today? Yeah, it was a tough match. Uh, she's a tough opponent. Uh, she has plays big pretty much on every shot. And yeah, I think for the most part, uh, I had the lead. I think I should have just kept serving and putting my foot on the gas pedal. Um, I think I transferred that into the second set. Uh, not my best tennis, but you know, a lot of improvement to look at for the next matches. In terms of, uh, did you change tactics at all between the first and second sets in terms of how you wanted to play once you had the lead? It seemed like like going to the net, getting kind of moving forward seemed to be a thing that was happening more in the second than maybe the first. Yeah, I, I told myself I needed to be more aggressive because she was just running me around the court, especially using her forehand. And, um, you know, for the first couple of games, she was making more errors. So I was just, you know, putting it in play. And then she started to make them. And, to play smarter and go for um, bigger targets, and it started to get difficult. So I, I knew I needed to be on the offensive end if I wanted to win the match. And I tried, started to play like a little aiming deeper. I was okay with missing long, and then also coming in, especially when I had her on the uh, wrong foot. Speaking of playing big, uh, playing Alicia next, who yeah. has the ability to play pretty big. What's your familiarity with her in terms of, uh, I know she's a couple years older than you, but how long have you known her? Did you play it all growing up? Have you played, have you played much in this phase yeah. of your life? Yeah, I've known her for a long time, since I was like mm, maybe like nine years old. Uh, I used to practice with her and her sister. Uh, we both lived in Delray Beach or like in that area. And yeah, I know her very well. I always root for her, <laughs> obviously not for the next match, but uh, she has a big game, big serve, um, big shots, very athletic. I think she's one of the most, if not the most, uh, one of the athletic players on tour, like me, her, and Sloan, and Iga are probably up there, and Sakari. Um, so, and there's more I'm probably missing, but that was those would be like my top five. So she's like up there. and. Yeah, it's going to be a tough match. I don't expect it to be easy. I've never played her, actually, since um, that age, other than the mixed doubles we had at, mixed, at US Open. But I've never played her in practice or anything. So um, we're both going in, you know, not blind, because we obviously watched each other, but we never hit or anything. So it's going to be a tough match. Um, she's a great player. And um, I've always knew that she was going to do well on tour. It was just you know, a matter of when it was all going to align. And I think now it's starting to align. Uh, Klaus Hildström from TT News Agency of Sweden. Uh, I want to ask you about the, the very last game of the match. And it was so much back and forth. You had match points and there were break points. Uh, I can imagine that was pretty like tough mentally. How did you do to, to pull yourself out of that and just take home the match? Yeah, I think the aggressive serving was the big thing that I needed to do to get out of that game. Also, I didn't, I, you know, it's a pressure game, but I also knew that the pressure was more on her because, you know, if I lose that game, I have a chance to break back or also serve again for it. Um, obviously, I wanted to win it there, but I think just giving yourself a mindset of, like, this isn't life or death makes it, you know, a little bit more relaxed to play. Um, again, she started going big, um, and, you know, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, that game. Uh, but I think the serving got me out of that. AustralianOpen.com, you mentioned before there's room for improvements. You haven't dropped a set yet, but if you had to say one element or one area where you would really like to make improvements going forward, what would that be? Uh, I think I can be more aggressive, uh, you know, which is tough because, you know, this match I played someone who plays pretty aggressive, heavy. She plays like a guy almost using the slice. Um, but I felt like I was too much on the back foot in the first set. So I think I can play more aggressive and be more sure of my shots and, and hitting depth. I think I, I put too many balls in the service box in the first set, and that's why she was able to dictate the points. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely can play more aggressive. Uh, serving, um, I think I got broken what, twice, yeah, twice the first set. Uh, so when I'm in the lead, I would like to continue to be aggressive serving, which is what got me the lead. Um, so yeah, serving and, and just being more aggressive, and that's just the mindset thing. I, I know I have the game to do it. I just have to believe in it. Is it, is it 
especially challenging to make yourself more aggressive because you're particularly good at, as you said, running around the court and you're very athletic and you know, during the US Open you get that refrain of make it physical, Coco, we all kept hearing that yeah. um, from the box. But So is that, does that become a challenge when you can do this thing quite well, but you know you need to do that thing? Yeah, it can be depending on the opponent uh, today she was making a lot of errors early on. So sometimes when you're playing an opponent like that, you your first thought is to just, you know, make her keep playing because you know she's going to miss. And then I think I w in the, I've kind of not forgot, but leaned into um, just making balls. And really she was missing in the first couple of games because I was being aggressive and hitting deep and not necessarily just because she was error prone. And then, um, yeah, and all, I feel like for me, it's making that more of a plan B, the defensive things. Like, obviously, there's going to be some opponents where you they only can hit and not really, you know, fill the core out. And then there's going to be some where you need to be aggressive from the first ball or whenever you have the chance. And today, I think that was one of the things that I needed to do, which I did do in the second set. Courtney, Benjamin. So I think you have the two fastest serves on the women's side through so far. Uh, in the tournament. I think Alicia's right behind you. But um, in terms of, we obviously talked about it a lot in your other press conferences, the, the serve. I'm curious, if you take the mental side of, of the serve out of it, how natural is that motion for you throughout your career, like when you first started serving when you were younger? Like how much tinkering has it gone under? Or was it just like toss it up and hit it? You know, like how, yeah. can you give a little insight into that? Yeah. It I would say not that much tinkering. Like there's like small things that I changed, which not really like I didn't never had to do like big changes in the serve. Like I've always had a sound motion. It's more so, um, you know, keeping the left arm up, things that I can change in a second, which doesn't feel off. I never had to go through like a big motion change or anything like that. So it has been pretty natural. Um, and the speed, I've always been able to get up there. Um, again, it's just a serving mentality. And I think the a small adjustment I made with Andy helped me be more consistent with the serve. And that got me out of that last game, hitting those big aces or big body serves or even the slider wide. Uh, I think it's when I'm playing like that, it's tough as an opponent because uh, there's not really, they don't know where the serve is going to go. And, and, you know, sometimes I can serve it slower and sometimes it can come really fast. So I think just being, continuing to be variety and not so much get into one zone is when I'm serving my best. And do you remember when the first time was when you cracked a serve, whether it was when you were a kid, <laughs> juniors or whatever, where you're like, wow, like that's fast. Um, I think when I got on tour, actually, uh, because when I got on tour, I noticed when I was really serving, like I was serving faster than a lot of the girls on tour, which like I was 15, so um, I wasn't expecting that. Um, so yeah, I would say when I got on tour, and like when you're in juniors, they don't have the surf clock, but definitely um, I would say the first year on tour, I was getting up like high uh, 110s and high or low 120s, even at that age. and. Um, and then you, you know, sometimes on the changeovers, they show like the surf speed leaders and I would always be on the list. So, um, yeah, I think when I got on tours, when I really realized like how fast I can get it and now, uh, you know, I don't need to get it much faster. It's, uh, I mean, I would love to get maybe 130 just to try to get that, but you know, it, it, 128, 130, I don't think it would make much of a difference, but as long as I can keep hitting my spot. Opposite question, but you're, pl you've, you're playing two big servers back to back. I'm curious mm -hmm. about your return, just how that shot has developed over the years and how much time you spend on it. Because I was, I was like, last year I was talking to a lot of male players about the return, and some of them, like Francis, even said they barely practice it. So I'm curious oh, wow. Just, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I actually practice a lot on it. Um, and one of the reasons why is because when I used to see Serena practice or um, she would spend like hours or like a whole practice almost on her on her returns, and which is why she's like such an incredible returner. And yeah, I mean, playing today with a big server, and then obviously the next round I'm going to play a big server. I think just putting the return in makes such a big difference, whether it's a great return or not. Obviously, you want to rip them, but today I knew going into the match. I wasn't probably going to get that many rips at it just because her first and second serve is really good and it bounces really high and I started the match serving back. Um, and I'm probably going to have to do that the next match. So uh, I do spend time, a lot of time on it. Serving returns, I think, are 
uh, one of the most important shots in tennis because it starts the point and it, you know, it sets you up. And for me, uh, I try to spend like equal amount on serve and, and returning. Um, and I think my returns are something that's improved over the years. And hopefully I can keep improving them. Has anything changed like since you first came on the tour and started facing big serves? Yeah. Have, have you like moved, moved back or tried to sh shorten your swing mm -hmm. or anything like that? Yeah, both. I think I realized, you know, from juniors, you're playing most of the time girls who don't serve that big. So I was used to standing inside the baseline and ripping and, you know, doing all of that. And then you start playing, you know, grown women who can actually serve and serve really hard and consistently hard. And you can't stand inside and rip. So sometimes it's not as pretty of a shot when you get it, like, just return it middle or deep or whatever. And not as pretty as, like, a clean winner. But it's necessary. So... Um, yeah, I think just playing with the reserve position is what I like to do. Sometimes I'm back, sometimes I'm up. Today I was mostly back, um, and there's matches. Sometimes I'm mostly up. It just depends on, you know, the server. And, and yeah, and definitely shorting the swing. I watched a lot of Novak because I wanted to I want to return like him. He's probably the best returner, and, yeah, he definitely is, and I want to return like him. So he, if you look at his swings on the returns, it's not like full cuts. It's a lot – shorter and abbreviated to when he actually hits and I realized that you know when you're serving someone serving hard you can just use their pace you know against them and I think that's the model sometimes it's not always easy um, but you know that's something that I feel like is what I work on and practice on a lot but Francis should practice his returns <laughs> I mean I don't know he's a pretty good returner but you know you can always get better <laughs> yeah. can you compare not playing at a home slam. I mean, is it a completely different experience here? I imagine it's a little more chill for you. Oh, yeah, definitely more chill. Um, you can even see in the press room. <laughs> it's only a couple of you guys here, whereas US Open, it was, like, full. So uh, definitely more chill. Um, being played. Yeah, right? I mean, that's – look, I you know, I love talking to you guys. I see you pretty much every t slam, which is great. Uh, you guys always ask good questions. So – um, it's definitely more chill, and I, I like it. You know, the, the crowd support is different, for sure. Uh, I do still, you know, I, I, the last matches, obviously, I've been more the favorite in the crowd, but it's not like the New York crowd. Um, but I like Australian Open, and I like the chill vibes here. I feel less stress here. Um, and just walking around in Melbourne, I don't really get recognized that much, which is nice. Um, and just walking to dinner and, you know, maybe one or two people notice. And, yeah, it's something that I appreciate a lot. Thanks.